So in the past, I was using JGPT by copy pasting code back and forth, but apparently there's another way of doing it. So in the plugin store, so if you search for code, it comes up with this really interesting thing that says get read write access to files in your Visual Studio and uh, a Visual Studio Code project, which we have open there. So we installed that uh, plugin. Now on this uh, Codulator, Codulator, I think that's how you pronounce it. And they have this video explaining how to use this thing. And it looks pretty amazing. But essentially what's happening is that um, they share, so they're using this live share thingy. We need to install, yeah, so I was searching for Codulator, it's, so it's not there. Uh, they're using, uh, yeah, this live share thing. So it allows you to collaborate. Let's install. So that quickly, hopefully there will be no a sign-ins and the like. Start collaborating and debugging. You can also share with read-only permissions and join other session. Okay, we do need to sign in. We sign in using GitHub or Microsoft. I'm just signing in. Allow this extension. Yes. Starting collaboration. Accept read right yes it's connecting to a uh, my visual studio code we got an error it seems there was an issue with gaining read right access to the live share session to resolve this please follow these steps when i initially join the session select accept read only after i've joined right click on my name in the live share explorer and select make read right due to the live share bug the make read right option will not appear if accept read right was initially selected so i actually have to approve it so that's okay the link doesn't let you connect to my Visual Studio code um, without the uh, approvals. That's great. Don't care. I think it's already connected. I have an AI participant. It's already connected. I'm not sure what's the problem. EG dot like first then lines of I apologize for the inconvenience. I'm unable to access the live share session to read the EJS file. Would you be able to copy and paste the first 10 lines of the EJS file here? Then I can proceed with explaining them. I proceed with the live session. Should expect it to ask connecting to the Visual Studio Code a from GPT-4. I initially joined the live stream session saying accept read only, make read only. This is some sort of bug. <laughs> the set is bug with live share with Microsoft's live share. Okay, so now it's a read only. It's the same. No, it's not the same. So we're using GPT4 a plugin. We're using this code later a plugin to this same the video. Here's my live share URL review something. Um I think it just understands that this is a live share URL, a review, eg.js. Expect this to, so it's the codulator trying to connect. I'm meant to be getting a notification here. Accept. Right, so I have AI connected to my uh, Visual Studio code, which is great. Okay, now I'm making it read write and uh, proceed and try to read it again oh come on no the path that's not the path um copy path shared terminals at this is this even correct so the ai sitting there uh, reading this page this file that's having um trouble okay let's see this video doesn't really work. Show you a new chat GPT plugin called Codulator. Codulator, Codulator gives you full access to your Visual Studio Code workspace directly inside chat GPT. Great. So let's look at some examples. First, okay. let's fix this broken test with 
Okay, how do you start this thing? I should have explained. Fix this unit test. So it's just um, mode plugins, extend plugin, new chat, uh, they're putting the live share thing. So I have the AI connected here. Fault and follow. So it has read write permission. So that should be fine. With Codulator enabled, we can simply share the invite link for our live share session with ChatGPT and ask it to fix the test. ChatGPT joins our session, reads the relevant code, and proposes a fix. With our approval, the fix is applied automatically. You'll see Codulator navigating around the code base and making changes in real time. Yeah, great. That looks fantastic. Except it doesn't... It is connected to my Visual Studio Code. You can see it's sitting there. Can you read adjusted variables from uh, just a simple task? Right. File, file, the file. I mean, you're sitting there in the in the file. Now, this is also please show that the files are included in the shared session. Check in here live share yeah it looks the same as what they have to reshare copy collaboration link check the file is listed the visual circle right click on the file select add to live share session add to it's not there let's restart this thing start it again this will have a different uh, let's start a new chat, ChatGPT plugin, uh, Codulator, and this is a link to we'll give an error now. Right, accept. I think it said they need to accept read and read only first, and then potentially give it the uh, right, right permission as well. Make read write. Uh, done. I think that's only the main files, main GA. I just opened the uh, uh, first uh, folder. Talking Bionic Geos site. Uh, what? It appears that there are no additional folders in the current directory of your project. The files listed are all at root level. If you have other directories or files that are not showing up, could you please specify the paths or names, or let me know what specific content or structure you are looking for? Are there other folders at the root level? There should be three. One of them called Bionic Geos site. There might be an issue with the permissions or the visibility of the folders. Could you please check if the folders are located in the same directory as the live share session or if there are any permission restrictions? If everything seems fine, let me know and I'll investigate further. Okay, it seemed to be doing something, but uh, okay, let's go. Let's go here. Okay, I have to share it again. Let's start a new chat. Seems to seem to do something. They're not connected. Project folder structure. Okay, now I think it's actually connecting. Needs a task to begin with. Accept read only. I think you need to make read and write uh, later. I think that's what it said because there's some sort of bug with the Microsoft <laughs> product. Just that permissions. Right. So it has access. So we're now collaborating uh, with JGPT. Just trying to make sure it's using UC. Right. That's good. IEG2. So we're using this codulator, it's working okay. It has the direct access to uh, Visual Studio Code via what's called Code Share, Live Share. So that seemed to work okay. So this one, eg JavaScript is in the static folder, eg js codulator. So it's using uh, GPT-4, it's a plugin. The docs uh, is quite large. <laughs> What's the problem? It appears that the JS file is quite large and I'm unable to view its entire content at once. However, I can still help you review specific sections or functionalities within the file. How many lines of code can you process at once? The number of lines I can process at once depends on the complexity and length of the lines. There isn't a fixed number, but rather a limitation on the total amount of data that can be processed in a single request. If a file is too large, it might be partially squashed to fit within the limit, with some sections replaced by ellipses. If you need to review a large file, I can still help by processing it in sections. You can specify a range of lines or a particular section of the code you're interested in, and I'll focus on that part. So we have this Flask application. Looks like that. 
So the Flask application is working fine. I would like to focus on the way the window is being loaded. It seemed to change the window size five seconds after initial load. I need to narrow down the search to find the specific code that changes the window size five seconds after the initial load. Since I can't view the entire file at once, could you provide any keywords, functions, or variable names that are associated with this behavior? This information will help me locate the relevant code more efficiently. Can you just find it within the code yourself? I'm currently unable to view the entire content of the e.js file at once due to its size. However, I can read specific line ranges to find the code that changes the window size 5 seconds after the initial load. To proceed, I'll read different sections of the file to locate this specific behavior. I've reviewed the first 100 lines of the e.js file. There is a function named resize plot around line 42 that might be related to resizing the window. Since the content of the resize plot function is not fully visible, I will need to read further to determine if this is the function responsible for changing the window size 5 seconds after the initial load. Yeah, this is the problem of this whole thing. Can we go back and read the text files or context? Get the context. So start, go back. The info.txt file contains information about a project that involves reviewing a 16-channel intracranial EEG, IEEG, sampled at 400 Hz, with epileptic seizures recorded using a NeuroVista implant. The project involves reviewing a 16-channel, 8 from each hemisphere, intracranial EEG, IEEG, sampled at 400 Hz with epileptic seizures recorded using a NeuroVista implant. Users can play or scroll through the file manually using a slider. There are options to select active channels and turn them off to hide the trace. Users can change how traces are grouped with overlay options, off, default, grouped separately for left and right channels, or all overlaid on top of each other. The set value sets the amount of separation on the screen. The window size can be adjusted from 0 to 60, with 10 seconds being the default. The data source is NeuroVista Intracranial EEG, available on IEEG.org. App.py, main Flask application file. I'm developing locally at the moment. It generally works okay on. However, I have a few minor issues. For example, the window size when the page loads. Uh, seem to have a problem with uh, loading it at a smaller size and then the size changes uh, later on. It sounds like a front-end issue, possibly related to CSS or JavaScript that's affecting the initial rendering of the page. To diagnose and fix the issue, I'll need to take a look at the relevant code. Could you please point me to the files where the window size and rendering are handled, or should I explore the project to find them? Please explore. Okay, we reached. I think this is where <laughs> it's probably an indication. For, for us to stop.